the host, along with Maria Menounos, of the latest episode of Roku Recommends that comes out every single Thursday, and so much more. The uh, empresario himself, Andrew Hawkins, is back here on the program. Good to see you, man. Good to see you, too. Let's jump into it. Um, right. So, a kid from uh, uh, Toledo, um, sitting on a draft weekend, waiting for the phone ring. Is that what your draft was like back oh, in the day? Oh, man. That was... What was your draft like? I knew my phone wasn't going to ring. You but did. you know what's funny? Is when you play college football... It doesn't matter how realistic you realize your phone is not going to ring at all. Mm -hmm. You still watch the draft and you're like, but what if they call? Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. Like, because you believe that these teams are truly lifting every stone. Right. Like the movies tell you. And there's somebody in the back of a war room that says, nah, man, I believe in this kid. Yeah. You know, even if it's a small percentage, that's that's what it's like. Right. So, um and you went through, didn't hear any calls, and that's is that when the CFL called you, the Montreal's, where you had to go win a couple of great cups before yeah, the well, NFL knocked on your door? Not draw, quite. Or? So I, I, my career yards in college, I think, was 632 over all four seasons. That's it? That's it. So 632 yards, right. and I was 5'7 and 160 pounds. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I, I was realistic about it. Um, but again, I'm like, well, maybe I'll get a tryout. I was training. I was like, I did. I had a really good pro day, yeah. even though I faked my height. Um, well, how does one fake height? Well, I went to Michael's, um, a craft store, <laughs> and I molded clay that looked the same color as my skin, like the back of the heel, and then I taped my ankles over it, so it gave me like an inch and a half on pro day. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> True story. This is amazing. Um, like I had to like bake the 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 clay and everything because it's soft, and then it, to get it to harden, you had like put it in a kiln. Yeah, yeah. And so prior to pro day, yep. And so I walked in, measured at you know five eight, great. I was like a little <laughs> over five eight. I weighed in one eighty two because I had weights in my pocket, um, and I ran a four three. And I'm like, well, maybe just looking at the numbers. It was like, okay, maybe. So what happened was I ended up getting a tryout with the Browns because one of my old coaches actually became a DB coach there. Yeah. But on draft day specifically, I was over at my friend's house, um, and he was roommates with Brett Kern, who was one of the you know best punters of the last you know two decades. Yeah. Um, and he was there with his family watching because he actually had a chance to be drafted. Uh, and so I watched their whole process, which was you know they're hoping late in the you know punters go late. And then the Broncos called and a bunch of teams started calling him. And his family like, well, what are you going to do after, after college? Like, do you have a job lined up? And I'm like, ah, you know, I'm figuring it out. But it was very clear, like, I wasn't an NFL prospect. Did you run a 4-3 in the clay shoes? I didn't. So what happens is they measure you in. After I get the height, yeah. I cut the tape off, throw it away. And then I go, Brilliant. go perform. Brilliant. Yeah. That's Brilliant. amazing. Wow. So when did the NFL finally call you? When you were in Montreal? Uh, like four years later. Really? Yeah. So I like I left college. I didn't leave college. I stayed in college and I coached receivers that mm -hmm. season. I went and yeah. scouted with the Detroit Lions. Yes. Um, and then I did a reality show with our good friend Michael Irvin. That's right. Uh, fourth and long. That's right. And so I left coaching to go do that show. Yeah. I should have won. Mike will, will attest. He'll attest to that. Okay. But he, he couldn't convince them to pick a five, uh, six receiver from a reality show to go to the Cowboys. But from that, I got my CFL contract. And then I went and played in Canada the next two seasons. Yeah. And in year four after college, I finally got a tryout in the NFL. And then I played the next seven years. So you would counsel guys that don't hear your name this this in a, in a couple of weeks. Just hang tight. Hey, keep at it, man. You know? Yeah. That's it. That's, <sighs> all, that's, all, you can, that's all you can do. I hear you. Andrew Hawkins here uh, on the Rich Eisen Show. So uh, you hear about uh, Bryce Young's height being an issue? Yeah, you think that's that's nothing, right? It's nothing, man. Zero, zero, zero. I think I think Bryce is a, I think he's a next level processor. I think he is like ridiculously smart, and that's backed up by the way that he plays, right? Because you have yes. to be right. There's certain characteristics that you know whether you're you know a, a D lineman who's too too heavy, or a receiver who's too short, or a quarterback is too short, or you know, a certain quarterback doesn't have enough arm strength like everybody, you know, sur survival of the fittest happens. Something yeah. else kicks in. Yeah. He's short, but his processing is better than everybody else's. And that's why, you know, it equalizes. So it still just comes down to, you know, I don't, I don't think that that's a, a negative because he can do things that other quarterbacks can't. Well, C.J. Stroud is much taller mm -hmm. and obviously um, uh, would fit, one would think, Frank Reich's 
mold yep. of what he has coached in the past, not as if he wouldn't right. choose Bryce Young. Mm-hmm. Who do you think they'd have as number one in mind? Oh, man, who do they have as number one? What do you think? That's a tough one. I think... I think... Mm-hmm. I would say C.J. Stroud. That's what I thought, too. But then all of a sudden you said that... You know the odds yeah, on the, favorite flipped over yeah, the last. The Vegas odds it did. Flipped. Yeah, because Bryce did. Young went. He he went to Carolina this week, and then it flipped, which caused makes people think somebody must know something. Yeah. Even though people who are paid to know stuff haven't said a word. Right. Right. But I just think Stroud does fit their. He does the idea. A and I think bit. Stroud's going to be a beast, and not not because of anything he's done in the field. Yeah. I love his story. I love his mentality. Yeah. When I hear him talk, I'm like, oh, this dude is going to. He, he's going to command a locker room and people are going to rally around him. Like, it reminds me a little bit of, like, Joe Burrow. Yeah. Like, when I first interviewed Joe Burrow in that class, it was just so, like, apparent. He had, like, a real confidence to him. Yes. He had a swag. He had an edge. And that's what the guys around you kind of gravitate to. But it also dictates how you play under pressure situations and when you get amongst the best, like, because he felt like he belonged there. Yeah. I get that same kind of feel from C.J. Stroud. Andrew Hawkins here on the Rich Eisen Show. Every week here on a Friday, we uh, we have a segment called What's More Likely, where Chris has a couple of uh, either-or scenarios. Mm-hmm. I, uh, I'm tapping you into this this let's week. Let's do it. Okay, let's Love do games. it. We have, uh, we have uh, uh, production value and everything. Go ahead and hit it, everybody. What's more likely? Never say never, but never. And uh, joining us here for this Friday's What's More Likely is Andrew Hawkins. Uh, Go for it, Chris. Let's do it together. Hey, guys. Hawk, thanks for joining us. Let's get right to it. Who is the more likely quarterback to be drafted ahead of the other? Will Levis or Anthony Richardson? What do you think? What's more likely? Oh, man. This script is flipped as well. It was Richardson over Levis a million times out of a million Right about two weeks ago, this f- script is flipped right now as well. Yeah. I would say they're they're interestingly like kind of in a similar boat, but I would say Levis. And I'll still stick with Richardson. I yeah. still I still believe when when all is said and done that Richardson is gonna be a guy that has the bigger upside if he can do the run pass thing in mm-hmm. a way that I think he can. Uh, I, I just don't I don't know. I, I would find. I I'd be stunned if if he's left on the board and he's the one who drops into the lower yeah first round, lower part of the first round, or the the the, the top ten. If he drops down the top ten, that would be. I, I'd find that surprising. But we got 13 more days to go. Do you consider it a red flag? Uh, from Will Levis that he eats his bananas with the peel on. Have you heard about that? I thought that was a little strange. It, mm-hmm. it definitely gave me serial killer vibes. But you know. <laughs> I think every player has an edge to yeah. him. Um, what if he did that in a locker room that you were in? Like he's just sitting there and he just takes a banana and takes a bite out of it like it's a sandwich. Yeah, if he was a yeah. if he was a rookie and we just drafted him yes. and he grabbed a banana and didn't peel it and took a bite. Yes. I'd say, wow, they made the wrong decision. Yeah, they would. <laughs> yeah. You'd say you'd, yeah. you'd, you'd, there would be some sort of kangaroo court. Okay. Yeah. All right, so we split <laughs> on that one, Chris. What else you had? Uh, 92% on our poll uh, thinks. It's Eating a banana with, without peeling it is a red flag. Oh, you put that on a poll. <laughs> put that out. I poll. didn't know that. Ninety-two percent. So wait a minute. That means there's eight percent of people who say that's no, that's all good. Honestly, not a big deal. So if we put hold deal. on a second, we put a hundred percent, a hundred people in a room. Yep. And had an individual stand up in front and just bite that yep. and say, "Does this con- you consider this strange or not?" <laughs> eight. There would be eight people that would say eight. no. They'd be like, "Yeah, it's fine." Eight people that are like, yeah, I'm, I'm not uncomfortable. What the hell? With this uh, dude eating banana peels. That's bizarre. Very strange. Uh-huh. What else? What else you got? All right, speaking there? of strange, the idea that the uh, Texans might not take a quarterback. So what's more likely to be drafted second overall? Any quarterback or Will Anderson? Quarterback. Me too. There's no way. That has been, by the way, something that has been 100% put out there. Schefter did it. Uh-huh. First to say it earlier this week, Albert Breer came on and backed it up for sure. He, they're not sold that the Texans are going to take a quarterback second overall. You know what? I think in, in, in this, this this game is interesting because I think a lot of times, like even I'm answering questions of what I think will happen and not what I believe should yes, sir. happen. Yes, sir. Right? Because in the draft, especially for new coaches, the best thing to do is to not take a quarterback, especially in your first year. Yes. Or, or just hang on to the quarterback you have because – 
it gives you a longer shelf life. Yes. Because then you always have the out of, I got to find my quarterback. I thought Gruden was always great at that. He would come into a job and never commit to the guy he had, no matter how good he played. Right. Because he always needed the out of, you suck. I need to go find a new guy. <laughs> and that allowed you to stay a head coach for a longer period of time. So I get that. I never thought of um, it that way. You know, in, in the context of, again, people keeping their jobs, I just don't think it's a smart thing to do. I don't believe they're going to be picking second overall and seeing either Stroud or Young there and go, yeah, we'll take somebody else. I yeah. just, I would find that hard to believe, but Wild. they would have to trade it, down, right? Like that becomes that, the. Well, they also have 12. They have this 12th overall pick sitting there. And if Richardson does drop or Levis does drop, yeah. or Hendon Hooker sitting there and you kind of just say, we'll take him and, and, and Dark push David Mills right. and let him develop? I don't know. Or draft neither and go call uh, the Patriots and say, is Mac Jones really available? Remember that time you called <laughs> us earlier in uh, in March? Is he still available? Man. We're not getting number 12 for him. No. My son is really high on Hendon Hooker. Is that right? Yeah, my 11-year-old son. He What's likes his to scouting report? Well, he did a scouting report last year, um, and he had Hendon Hooker as one of the top guys for last year's draft. Yes. He thought that could have made it happen. Um, his drafts. He's, he he loves he he's a he's a ball hawk he gets into it. Okay. Um, well, he is a hawk. He is a hawk technically. Right, correct. Yes. Uh, uh -huh. it, it, he but he scouts like an eleven year old. <laughs> yeah, did you see how far he threw it? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, it's, it's on my Twitter somewhere. I'm sure I, I'll find the search and okay. then we'll. Very good. We'll do that. What <laughs> yeah. else is what else you got over hey, there? Hey guys, did you hear uh, the Ravens have a new receiver? Did you guys hear that? No. Did they? Odell Beckham. Oh, yeah. who's that? Now in Baltimore. What's more likely? <laughs> Odell catches 10 or more touchdowns this year. The Ravens miss the playoffs. Oh, this is a Patriot coming up with this <laughs> ten, question. 10, ten or more touchdowns. touchdowns. Yes. Or Ravens the, aren't missing the playoffs. Ravens aren't missing the playoffs. The Ravens aren't missing the playoffs. Really? No. They didn't have they didn't have Lamar Rich. for a third of the season last year. They didn't have a wide receiver catch a Rich. touchdown for two thirds of the season last year. They didn't have Mark Andrews for the full season last year. Preach. They didn't have any of that, and they still not only made the playoffs, but without Lamar, almost knocked off the Bengals and would have if Tyler Huntley had only gone low instead of high when they were on the half-yard line. What, what else? What, Hold on. Am oh, I wrong? Way, if I had a nickel for great. every time I should have went low instead of going high. All of, that, yeah. all of those are facts. But let's look at this logically yes. by looking at the standings. Which of these teams do you expect to make the playoffs this coming season? Uh-huh. The Kansas City Chiefs. Yes, I'll check that box. Mm -hmm. The Buffalo Bills. I'll check that box. The Cincinnati Bengals. I'll check that box. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about the Jacksonville Jaguars? Yeah. I don't know, but somebody from the South has got to win, so okay, they'll just great. check that box. So there's one spot. Right. How about the Los Angeles Chargers? You got to. I, I, I need to be sold. Miami Dolphins? I need to be sold. All right, so if you think all of those teams are suddenly you need to be sold on, who's going to take their spots? I think the Ravens you think are... The, you think the Jets are making the playoffs, don't you? Well, if Aaron Rodgers shows well, up soon... Last segment, he's coming. You, were, you told me he's he coming. was already there. He's coming. Okay, what about the Denver Broncos? Think they're going to be improved this year? Yes, but not making the playoffs. Mm, not playoffs. How Thank about you, the Andrew. Titans? One yeah. of the teams has to win that division, right? Yeah, just one team is going to make it. That's all. Half the teams every year don't make it. Who made it the year before? Is there anything that I've said that did not stutter? The Ravens are going to make it. The Ravens again. are going to make it. The and Raiders here's the think thing. they're going to be better? Come on, guys. Lamar Jackson is going to play the whole season. And for Baltimore, right? For Baltimore. Okay. I think that. I think at this stage, you know, draft, whatever happens. But Lamar Jackson plays the whole season. He's one of the winningest quarterbacks. And I know that's not a quarterback stat, but that coupled with what they have defensively and how they run the football. And to his point, they're in the playoffs without him. If he's there, if Lamar Jackson is playing and he's in a contract year and I've been in a contract year, this is the most important contract probably season of his career. Yes. You, players have a, I don't know how the, the stars align, but you do everything in your power to, to be on the field and play the best that you can. And under that scenario, there's no way a playing Lamar Jackson team does not make the playoffs. With Odell having 10 or more touchdowns. Good luck, guys. All right. Another football one, and we'll get to a couple of NBA. Now that Dan Snyder's out, who makes <laughs> it back to a Super Bowl first? Commanders or Cowboys? <laughs> <laughs> 
That's that's easy. Oh, TJ. Um, <laughs> that's simple. Come on, cuz. Who makes it back to a Super Bowl first? Uh, he's got to think about it. Yeah. Because I, hey, the commanders have got some playmakers now. And at some point, one would think Chase Young is going to come back healthy. They got some playmakers now. I, I don't see... Think about the, the Cowboys. I, I don't feel like the Cowboys are... I don't look at them and say, oh, they're going to win a Super Bowl soon. Oh. I don't look at the commanders and say that either. But you have but to I'm choose just what's like, more likely here. That's what you got to do. We see the Cowboys in this for a very long time. I actually like the teams and organizations doing this because you take Bengals-style jumps at some point. You know? I don't know. I probably would say the commander. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> to be honest. He talked himself into it. I mean, I don't I definitely don't want to boo you, but I you have can to boo, boo me too. I can't all boo right. you, man. That's okay. I don't want to let it slide. Although his Cowboys uh flag is down. I don't know where it's where it's over here. Let's right? put it okay. Yeah, I put away for the offseason. Uh, and just for you, I'll take the Cowboys. I'll oh, just take it. You know. Yeah, just just for you. There you go. I, I don't know if you it. can hang that like a like like your flag, but <laughs> You got a couple other ones? All right, a couple NBA ones. Okay, uh, let's do it. NBA playoffs this weekend. Uh, who's more likely to win a road playoff game this weekend, Lakers or Clippers? I'll go with the Lakers. I'm going with the Lakers. I'll go with the I'm Lakers. With you on that. I'll go with the Lakers in, in Memphis. I like what I'm seeing out of the Lakers, I'll man. take Lakers. It, it's a game one, right? Game one. So I, I, I just don't, I don't know, man. The Clippers... Minus Paul George in Phoenix, first playoff game with Durant. That place will be lit. Booker yeah. will show up. I have a problem thinking the Clips can win game one, and it's easier for the Lakers to do it. Don't you I think? I agree. I agree completely. I agree. I, I can't even improve on that take. Let's just try and get uh, LeBron and AD to combine for less than 10 turnovers and minus five on the plus minus. They do that, again, they will lose. And what's more likely is neither win. But I'll I'll, I'll take the Lakers with Hawk right here. You got one more? One more for me and TJ. Who's more likely to lose their playoff home opener, Celtics or Sixers? Celtics versus Hawks. Sixers versus Nets. Um, I'll, tell you, I'll take your Celtics. I'm going to say Celtics too. Trey Young just going to light it up. He's a killer, man. He it's certainly in any playoff series, playoff series in a place that's uh, oh. a, a garden, Hostile. a garden. garden. Yes, garden. Madison Square. He personally torched it. <laughs> he personally torched it. Loved every second. Oh, he did, didn't he? <laughs> yeah. Okay. What's more likely, everybody? Andrew Hawkins. <laughs> we got it. Oh, we got one more. Oh. All right, we'll get one more. But you just said one more. Anyway, okay, know. very good. Look at What's you. What's more likely? <laughs> <laughs> Great acting. <laughs> Great acting. Uh, the Rays lose over the weekend, or an eight seed gets a victory. Rays lose tonight, so that's it. Rays lose tonight. Rays lose tonight. No eight seeds gonna, dude. No eight seeds gonna win this weekend. None. Rays lose tonight because they're on the road. They're in Toronto. They're not playing the Red Sox anymore. Or the A's. Or the A's <laughs> anymore. And um, during a big sequence tonight, Rays are trying to score, and a nine-year-old's going to screech because that's what happens in Toronto. <laughs> you know? It's going to totally throw them off. There you go. Hey. <laughs> what would you think of that one? I loved it. <laughs> I did. I love it. That's the part of sports that's my favorite. But which is nine-year-olds who yes, are screeching their heads absolutely. off? Absolutely. Affecting the game, man. <laughs> Gotta love I it. I can't believe that uh, NBA players, after a while, couldn't start making free throws. and just Because <laughs> that's the way you tell a nine-year-old you got to stop doing that. Just make your free throws. That's it. That's it. You know how kids, kids will just keep doing stuff yeah, if course. they know they're being, I have if three they're of making them. a <laughs> They've been doing it for years, man. Screeching? It's, yes. Like that? Screech. Random screech to throw me off. Damn. <laughs> Uh, what else you got going on in your world? You always do. What, uh, what just do we got? business, same old, same old. Status okay. pro, NFL pro air. Make sure you're still playing. Okay. Crushing it. Just continuing to build on that. Those, and, that commercial that you first showed when you came on here uh -huh. in the playing season, that ran nonstop. Yeah, I know. It was awesome. Yeah. It was great. So we're going to see more of those? We're going to see more of those. Excellent. Fantastic. Yes, absolutely. Okay. So there's that. And you got Roku Recommends Roku tonight. Recommends. Um, Okay. I have some things. I should I should start coming here to make my announcements because I have some things coming down that are going to be pretty big. Okay. As you know, this studio is open to you anytime. My favorite studio. I love it here. I love that you love coming here. Fantastic. Uh, and when does Aaron Rodgers become a Jet? When do you think that happens? Because um, you know it's when, day right? Day two. 
Day two of the draft? Day two of the draft. You don't believe that he's going to still be a Green Bay Packer? At the no, beginning. there's no way. There's no way. There's no way. I think he'll retire before he's a Green Bay Packer. Damn straight he would. Yeah. And they'll pay him. Yeah. They don't want to pay him $60 million. Let Woody Johnson pay him all that money. <laughs> Woody will pay him. Woody will pay him. Yeah. He's ready to pay him. This guy. Right over there. He's such a doubter. You don't he's believe a, it? I didn't say he's anything. a hater. <laughs> he's a hater. I think he's not going to play well. You don't think he, you think he's going to play poorly for the Jets, right? I think uh, we've seen this before. Oh, stop it. The whole far from History that. repeats itself. Oh, one last thing for you. What did you make yeah. of Tyreek Hill saying he's going to retire at the end of this contract? Did you hear that? He said he's going to I did. He's going to tap out at age 31? I did. I don't I don't want to say I don't believe it. I think he believes it. I don't know if he'll I don't know if he'll actually do that. I get it though. That's kind of how I was, to be honest. I was mean? very much like What do you mean? I was ready not ready to go, but you want new challenges, you want you know, different things in, in mm -hmm. life to, you know, fill it again. I retired at 31 from the Patriots. And again, I was not Tyreek Hill by yes. any stretch of the imagination. Yes. Um, but I could have continued playing. It was just like eh, my heart wasn't wasn't there. I was blocking that opportunity from somebody else. And there were so many other things I wanted to do. Right. And so I do understand that aspect from Tyreek Hill. I just feel like there'll be there's probably still some more in it. The take that he's oh, not it's a hard imagine. decision to make of course it's well, not a decision people typically make three years he's, out he's three years out so yeah. he's got some more time to come right right yeah oh, now, he'll, and money's hard to turn down and he'll still be making a lot of money, money. is hard to turn down right, but look he, he's got his ring and he's got his money he might like you just said there's he always said there's other things he wants to do he wants so another maybe ring not, there's never enough it. money either yeah i mean that's always a good point everybody yeah. check out andrew hawkins on tonight's episode of roku recommends right here on roku and this terrific platform that you can catch this show on every single day between 12 and 3 eastern time you're welcome here anytime i love it whenever you're in our neighborhood let us know please catch the rich eisen show every single day on the roku channel 12 to 3 eastern for free